number one Iron Age booty daddy. Today is the day where the last bastions of American journalism and the freedom of press gets one more nail into the coffin. Project Veritas has decided, at least the board of Project Veritas, has decided to excommunicate, and I use that term very deliberately, James O'Keefe from the company. Now, this story has been developing over the last two or three weeks, and it is something that I has reserved talking about because, well... I usually talk about cultural movements and things like that, how storytelling can be better here on the channel. But ladies and gentlemen, I promise you today is something of that nature. Today is the day where the culture and where somebody who is fighting to expose the people attacking our culture. Today is the day where a man was brought to his knees. James O'Keefe and recorded a video of his farewell to Project Veritas, a company that he built 13 years ago. The man was accused of being a tyrant and was guilty of apparently not being too personal with his employees. Over the course of the last month or so, James O'Keefe has been assaulted by his, and I use assaulted figuratively here, has been assaulted by the board of directors. Okay. Shadow games have been played, misnomers have been out there, and lies has, have seemed to have been spread based off of the information that I have to his employees. James O'Keefe, for those of you who don't know, is a man who has gone out there and done undercover journalism since about 2007. He made his bones in that world, uncovering the Acorn story. For those of you who weren't there, one of the first people and most skeptical people to pick up that story was Glenn Beck back when he was on Fox News many years ago. The acorn story blew wide open and we started to see the unravelings and people actually you know, uncovering more and more pieces to what the, essentially at the time, the Obama administration had going behind the scenes, the things that were done, the community organizing, so to speak, and how the money was changing hands. Over the years, James O'Keefe has done many stories. His project Veritas, he eventually got to a point where he couldn't be the man on the street anymore and hired many people. The man was relentless in the stories that he would uncover and dragged to court many times and fought them and won. And so it would seem that as this titan of what seems to be fact and hopefully truth has accomplished, so were the corporate workings against him. Ladies and gentlemen, corporatism is working at its absolute most right now to try and eviscerate anything that can lead the public away from what is working behind the scenes. Now, a little over a month ago, back in January, the Pfizer story came out from Project Veritas. It was their biggest story that they had ever done. There were claims in that video from a Pfizer employee of which I will not state here because I don't want to misrepresent it, but the claims essentially were that Pfizer was doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And shortly after that, the board of directors decided that it was time for James O'Keefe to go. I just finished his 45-minute farewell. And through that entire thing and through pro the pro possible receipts that he has, the biggest thing that I learned about James O'Keefe was that the man was not personable to his employees. He was there for the goal, the mission, the idea of uncovering and hopefully exposing truth and fact to the American people, trying to make sure that journalism still existed in America. And as we see all around us, even the likes of Tim Pool, they can be halted.
by personal drama, and yet James O'Keefe seems to be trying to plow through all of this and get to the root of so many problems. If the receipts are real, the board of directors, after they made him take a corporate leave of absence, a dismissal, as it might be called, went to his employees and tried to twist the narrative to the employees of how he was gone and he might owe them an explanation. A tweet was then sent out talking about how, oh, he was on vacation, or at least it was represented that way. You then go through... You then go through so many things. The obvious character assassination trying to stipulate that he spent money on a wedding, but James O'Keefe isn't married. And in fact, the money that he spent was on a corporate Christmas party. They tried to go through and call donors liars. They tried to attack the people who have supported James O'Keefe for many years. And it would seem that corporatism ousted James O'Keefe. UC Project Veritas is no longer solely owned by James O'Keefe, but there is in fact a board of directors who are the shot callers now. The people who decide how the money is made, where the money is spent, and what stories are to be covered. And it just so happens that after the biggest story, going after one of the biggest enemies of the people, Pfizer, and I believe that they are the enemy of the people. After going after them, all of a sudden, James O'Keefe is no longer a friend. The board of directors were going directly to employees, which is absolutely unheard of. Usually you would bring in an HR consultant or something like that and say, hey, go ask the owner. No, but the board of directors were going directly to employees, offering raises to employees. If James O'Keefe were ousted, this is something tantamount in my personal opinion to corporate sabotage. And this is something tantamount in my opinion to sabotage of what little is left of the free press. Most of the press today kowtows to that of the GOP or the Democratic Party. They don't care to expose the truth to the American people. They don't care to invoke fact in their stories. And James O'Keefe over the years, for better or for worse, and even my opinion has waxed and waned on him at certain times, but the fact of the matter is, is the man, at least when he speaks, seems to be somewhat believable to me. James O'Keefe was just ousted by the board of directors that he most likely put in place. He asked them to resign because he realized that their vision for Project Veritas was not his vision, and they refused and instead decided to get rid of him. You see, his vision will not die, and Project Veritas will turn into the corporatist machine that it is, most likely bowing down to the ESG governance system that is being employed by banks, and most likely, that's what happened here. You see, it's okay when O'Keefe is going after small-time, you know, stories that are okay for the GOP to play on their big screens so that those people can get elected. But it is never okay to go after one of the major players. And I think that that was the only crime that James O'Keefe can be guilty of here, is that he went after one of the major players. He went after the company who made billions of dollars off of fear-mongering. Oh, and that company is Pfizer, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is a sad day for the freedom of the press, for a free press. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. It's absolutely appalling what's happening to James O'Keefe right now and how they are trying to destroy him and his legacy. But the fact of the matter is, is the man is beyond the name Project Veritas. 
and that's the good thing. And I think they underestimated that. They even went so far as to try to keep his dismissal from the company a secret, not sharing to the don to the donors. How would you keep James O'Keefe's firing from his own company a secret? Well, that's the corporatists for you. And those are the globalist asshats that are trying and utterly failing at concealing the voice of the people. So comment down below. Let me know what you think. And to James O'Keefe. Cheers to you, good sir. I wish you good health, good fortune, and many more years of exposing these people to the American people. Whatever ventures may come to you next, I hope to see them, and I hope that you prevail in your mission. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Never forget, if you would like to be a part of my supporter live streams, head over to my Gilded or my Locals. Links down in the description, and you guys can join me for those live streams every single Wednesday. But right now, I would love to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me. Over on Locals, we've got Little Andean, Sword Rush, Frequency Studios, Katie Francis, Kikomon, Iron Age Media. We also have... Over on the Gilded, JP, the Myriosphere Origin, Skunk's Workshop in the Gold Tier. He is an Iron Age booty daddy. Trippy Soul, also another Iron Age booty daddy. Kiko Mon and Frequency Studios to round all of it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the channel. And I will see you all in the supporter live streams.